All right, so it is uh, 6.03 p.m. by my watch. I'd like to open up the special meeting of the Woodbury Select Board. Um, the first thing on the agenda is calling the meeting to order. Do I have a motion to call the meeting to order? All those in favor? Aye. All right. So let's do some introductions. I'll start. Hi, my name is Chris Codius. I'm the chair of the Woodbury Select Board. Diana Peduzzi, Woodbury Select Board member and work. Liz? Lizzie Higgins, Woodbury Select Board. Okay, uh, Taylor Meyer, I have a uh, camp on the Nichols Pond Dam Road. I'm also a member of PDI. Uh, Nick Meyer, or Nicholas Meyer, uh, owner of Woodbury Camp, Nichols Pond, member of the PDI. Andrew Meyer, um, from Hartwick, but also a member of PDI, who owns property in Woodbury. Yeah, I'm Lucian Avery, I have a <laughs> Great. So the purpose of this meeting is to have a discussion of the Nichols Pond Dam Road, Town Highway 13, and the focus of the discussion is to understand whether or not it is a town road or a private road and how we move forward with what seems like a discrepancy at this point. I'm sorry, you said what? Somewhat of a discrepancy um, at this point. Well, this, this sort of started back in the fall when the select board got an email with a picture of a gate that we hadn't seen before. And so, in, yeah, from the front of the yeah, okay. And uh, he said, well, this new gate, what's up? I thought this was a private road. And so we put it on the agenda to talk about whether or not how to address it. And somebody saw it on the agenda and it all showed up. So we talked about it at some length at that time, but didn't, we all went away to try to come up with some more evidence and some more answers. You were, you were referencing the gates at the top. Right. Is that correct? The new one. Yeah. Well, I had questions about it. <coughs> Halfway down, when I showed up, I didn't know. But it was down about oh, nine months closed. And then I saw the gate top. And then I, looked, I came down and looked on the, on the um, internet and had the town road map and said the class four road. Mm -hmm. It's going on the gate. So I thought, it was down road. I asked the town's up for about it. So mm -hmm. that was how we, how we got there. Has something changed since it was designated as a private road? I'm sorry? Has the select board changed their view of whether of, of it was designated a private road or sign was put up in 2000? Uh, yeah, we right? didn't find any evidence that that, I mean, to change the status of a road involves a whole process. Right. And I haven't seen, been able to find or been shown any evidence that I, that was actually done. We have a map from 2000, 2000, 1006, no, 1916 that shows the, when the old road was thrown up and the new road was put in place. And ever since then, all these, ten, all these years, all these highway maps on v, from VTrans show that it's a class three, class four town road. So if it changed, if some, previous select board just said okay and they didn't go through the paperwork. Yeah, um. yeah I don't know, Norm was, was around, but in 1998, John Meyer, who was the EB guy, went to the town mm -hmm. select board and had to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And he was designated as a PBT and signed it up. And the sign disappears every now and then people steal it. Yeah, it's gone again. Sometimes yeah. we find it because I Oh, I looked around and I didn't, I didn't really look too far into the woods, but I know the design was not correct. Correct. It was put up. It was in there. It was put up. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you know, I, I just, 
personally, I think it's an asset that the public's been using for a long time. I'm sorry that there's sometimes disturbances people using that property by the dam. But but one of the things, so, so in 1998, the PBT sign goes up, but Norm did that in, uh, I think, 2006, because of the camp owners, because of the vandalism and issues down at the dam, the misuse of it, they got together and went to the select board. Mm -hmm. In 2008, the select board, I got, I got it, it was October 9, 2006, the select board town tells the camp owners, it's a problem the select board, and they, there's not much they can do about it. A good idea would be to gate the road and give a key to the police department, fire department, and the electric department. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with these issues uh, over the 80s and 90s and in 2006. So uh, they also tell them to uh, have curfews through the Lake Association. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, in 2007, the dam goes, and there's an issue with the dam. So everything's focused, the, the mm -hmm. lake is drained. Yeah. And then the, 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 coma, the uh, association and part of electric raise money mainly by the uh, association to redo the day, which is done, I think, what, 2008, around in particular? <laughs> but uh, so at the same time, they talk about this issue of you know, people going down there misusing, even though there's signs carrying the area out, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. don't do fires, don't camp, mm -hmm. private property, mm -hmm. EB high, the article electric associations on the side. Mm -hmm. This has been going on forever. Mm -hmm. And so one of the issues with the engagement is sort of how, how can we control the people who don't follow the signs or rules on the private property. So these gates were used, never locked, but used, put up. And I think uh, the middle gate, because when they finished the dam, and in 2011, there was another event where there was a huge underage drinking party for a graduation. Mm -hmm. The state police came and busted it. Yeah. At that point, some of the camp owners who were closest to the dam had not. That's when it was, I think, a vote by the association to put up the red gate. At, and it was voted not to block it, keep it on block. Mm -hmm. But put the gate up, just sort of some has sort it of. Been, has it been closed? Been closed, you mean the gate? Yeah. The there the were signs, there was a curfew, and some camp owners would go at 8 p.m. and close the gate. Oh. It says, but also the red one was. Uh, it's supposed to be up top, but because of the snowmobile trail, yeah. they put it in mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So how many gates are there? There's a red one in there. It was just the red one, but the, the, the top gates, because in 2022, ice fishing was open up to every uh, lake. Nichols was one of the first time. So all of a sudden, to the winter of 2002, all these people are going down the road to the red gate, just close to the winter. It's not wild. And jamming it up, getting stuck. You know, people would then try to go to the uh, pond or private property. So actually, the association, I think, went to the fishing game, petitioned to have Nichols Pond taken off the ice fishing list because of the habitat and the danger of the pond, the streams, etc. And people went over the private property. And, and did that happen? It, it went to the, to the board, and they said, no, it's open. Even though there's no access, basically, right, unless right. you saw that said, road. Well, they can go over your property to, what? to fish, unless you post it. So they told, I think some people did post the property, Whitcombs, Curtin Morris. So we were told, you don't want to cross your property with the shanty or whatever, the ice fish post it. Mm -hmm. So some people did. And so the gates were put on top to protect the road, keep everybody up top. And then signs were put up, saying camp owners own this road close for the season. And signs were put to the old ancient road. People could go down that way and get to the. Yes. Well, I had yes, a long walk. Well, a lot of people still Yeah. Because well, okay. there's a, again signs that would go down the mass trail to the thumb that would be on too. That would be on too. Because those are on Wickham property and put me in their private. For that right. trail goes. So you're saying they just got a small Well, if they're not locked, they would have unlocked it. No, it's it didn't have a sign on it also saying no. No ATVs. No ATVs. Oh, just ATVs. Yeah. But most people use cold sleds <clears throat> from that point down. Yeah. Whether they're snowmobiles? No, uh, cold sleds. They mostly snowmobiles. They walk? Oh, no. They just built all their sleds? Wow. There are a few camp owners that had issues because there was one spot that everybody was going across with snowmobiles and shanties, and they didn't want that. Mm. So they said no trespassing. So, so everybody up top. 
Because we did, two people did get stuck in the middle of the winter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a shoot. Mm -hmm. so. My memory of it, that first year it was open ice fishing, is that it was plowed right down to, I think, one of your properties in the circuit. Yeah, that year might have been plowed. And so people would go right down there and they'd get the plow, and the plow, the plow, the plow ended, and then there was a huge lump in the road that didn't go any further. And then they'd, they'd look left and see the, the, the lake right there and they'd shoot over there. Right. So I wonder if that would be part of the solution also for me to uh, either not push this on the middle of the road or to not plow it to the camp where they're going to look right across at the, at the lake. Mm. Yeah, this year it wasn't allowed. And it saved the road considerably in the what? spring because no one went down there in March and April. Because the association maintains it, I believe. Mean, they, they hired a victim's excavator and we bought the route with the association. And this year is probably the best thing there because no one drove down in March. Right. <coughs> And our, the alternative is not to keep people from accessing the pond for fishing, but would provide a better route that wouldn't go through people's private property. And which the problem we had is that more people on the road, as they said, creates more havoc on the condition of the road. Mm -hmm. So um, if you wanted to fish at Nichols Pond, you still have the opportunity to do it by accessing it over um, public land. And, and even if the road were public, You'd still have to go over private property to get to the pond, yeah. which, which, you know, um, could be. So if the landowners wanted to prevent ice fishing, they could post their land. But as the intent for since what seventy years, um, it's it's never been to keep the public from accessing. Mm -hmm. It's been having a controlled access point so that it's safe. Um, but um, also control so that if issues do arise, we are able to, to address it by stopping mm -hmm. access, which we don't. I don't think anyone in this room has had a problem or has not been able to access the, uh, the lake or the pond. Yeah. I, can't, yeah, I can't really picture how if somebody came down that back road, how they would actually get to the water. You mean the old ancient road? Yeah. Yeah, it's a trail. And it kind of comes out right the right below the dam, and then you're right there at the dam. But how do they get in the water? They just jump well, over the edge? Well, the ice fishing, you get it just... It doesn't go either side of the dam. Oh, okay. It's usually the left side of the dam, or at the dam. Yeah. The yeah. Well, but there is actually a lot of feet there, because there's the, the cable across. So they have there's to a cable across. Through the, the side. No, uh, the cable, we removed yeah. the cable and put stones so people could maneuver through the stones. Oh. Um, but in the winter, they were snowmobile the trails. They were way over, set their little tents up on Does the snowmobile trail go across the? the snowmobile trail got changed, right, to the, the ancient road underneath the tile line to the, on Wickham's. Wickham's. It pops okay. out back at the Nichols mm -hmm. Road. The power line takes yeah. it left, mm -hmm. probably. It's like 200 meters away. 100 yeah. before the. Before the turn in the dam road. So if it's um, to say it's a public road, let's say for argument, um, the private property would have people would have to go across would be um, disputed property around the that's disputed around the land, is that right? Or is that right? Say they own property and there's not, uh, not, not to us that's disputed. Right. Okay. Some people say it's disputed, then. It? It's uh, not a conversation that yeah. we're into um, the type of the electric. There, so. There's some land that, that's under dispute where people would go into the water. So just like saying mm -hmm. that, that it's, it's um, mm -hmm. private property that is um, under dispute. Yeah, the, the, the uh, survey plan that we have from 2016 shows the new road ending right at the property line. Yeah. Yes. But the the, te the state maps are all over the. I mean, the state state maps have the or class no, going see. off into the yeah, woods. Yeah, it's not terribly reliable. <laughs> and, and there are state maps that show the only ancient road still as a road years after it was discontinued. And mm -hmm. there are references to numbers of roads, like fourteen, is different places at different times. So mm -hmm. if you can imagine someone sitting in an office in Montpelier looking at hundreds of roads for maps and trying them to mm -hmm. align. Without a lot of information to do that, I think that's where you see some of the discrepancies of, of um, state maps that show, um, and we're not the only one, private, private roads that are classified as public based mm -hmm. on a, a state map. Okay. 
gates and the road. It's all about, you know, even back in 2016, they built a select board about vandalism, right? People down at the dam, you know, doing shooting guns, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the road now, people driving fast at night. I mean, we, we don't want to get into stories, top 10 stories about what we're finding on the road. It's not pleasant. Well, I've been having seen stuff. I've been seen stuff. The stuff is so. I mean, the game boards have been down there more often. Yeah. Hmm. Control. So when the, the dam was rebuilt, the, the contractor used that road for all their equipment? And, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the dam was built in um, 1906. And that, that road, the old ancient road, is the road that we used to, to build at their initial dam, mm -hmm. dam in 1906. And then in 1916, it was, it was closed. Mm -hmm. And you know, everyone, I'm glad people are referring to, you know, the, the 1916 um, discontinuance of the old road and the, um, the, the new right of way. Proposed. Proposed. Mm -hmm. right right. Right. Yeah. And we, you know, I think that's, this, this document, um, you know, has, some, has, has good things laid out, but also has a lot of interpretation mm -hmm. to it. Um, and you know, the, the, as it shows the proposed breakaway um, to the Granite Company property over the Ashley property, which basically, as it's stated here, Ashley is um, petitioning the select board with five other landowners to basically request that they, they discontinue the whole road mm -hmm. and substitute um, a right of way through there. And it's implied that it could be for the public, but it also could be so that these five property owners could then have access to the Ashley property. So Ashley was only able to give rights on things that he had, which was on his own property. So that's why you see it designates the only two camps that were currently existing were the James um, and Jennings. And Jennings. Um, property. So um, in theory, Ashley, in exchanging to, to throw up the old road, basically provided right of way for these two camp owners and other landowners that were uh, aligned there, which were part of the petition, which was the granite um, company of the road, Clark that also had a property abutting it, um, and then there's, there's one other property owner that was on that. And, you know, interpreting it as they threw up the road to provide access for these landowners on a proposed right of way, and then the question that we have been able to sort of determine is, you know, where where exactly that right of way mm -hmm. would have been. Um, the road, um, it's likely there's no reference to the road continuing beyond the two camp roads, which means this proposed right of way to get there was likely not um, built out. Now in, in 38. Um, You're saying the proposed right of way on this map? Was not the road that's there now? Uh, I don't know if the proof was ever. There's no proof it was ever actually put in. It's references a fence itself. It references a fence that is no longer there. Okay. Yeah. I don't think the road was ever actually established. Right. Yeah. So, Diana, okay. you know, where, where we are looking, where it might make the most sense in this is that Lloyd D., who bought the Granite Company, um, had um, properties for the timber rights, was um, doing a law job after the 38. Um, Hurricane. Hurricane. And bulldozed um, from the dam where he's going with logs, um, bulldozed that, that section of the road mm -hmm. so he could access and get his logs up to the top. So it's very likely that that, which, which at that time, 1938, um, would have been the time that that road would have connected to the dam. So for, for logging purposes. So um, it's. Um, and it, it references that this right-of-way road was unfit, um, but to be developed. Right. And, and you know, as you look at it, this, it's, I think it's, it's actually pretty interesting and intriguing about these old road issues. But um, what 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 was the next phase if it were to be developed? Where it was laid out, and if it actually was laid out, and was it the intent of the this petition from Ashley? to have a, a public road or to provide private um, access for those landowners um, as, as, it's, as it reads. So one, was it, was it in exchange for public access to where? 
or it was an exchange for access for these landowners who were who had the access, who had the opportunity to move over to substitute for their rights of way to get to their property through Ashley. Because this was all the private landowners who were part of this petition, petitioning. There was no public entity person represented in the petition um, to throw up the old road. So if you interpret it that way, then this old road was thrown out to give access um, for these properties, which it outlines, as you see, the two Jennings, the Jennings and the, and the you know, James, and the, James. the only yeah. camps that were existing mm -hmm. at that time. Well, this uh, little spur row that goes down to those two camps is still there and is shown on all the other maps since then. Um, but in order to get there, I mean, this proposed plan from 1914 shows this new right of way going all the way down to the property line. And it was proposed because it didn't actually take place until 2016. But when he wrote this plan in 2014, it was still proposed, although it does say somewhere in here that it needs to be built. <laughs> it needs to be built. It looks to me like this is between the, the people and the select, which is between the that it was the town that was, that was taking over. So if it's town road, it wouldn't generally just the people be the town use. For the purposes of public access to where? I don't know if it doesn't really matter if it's town road, but it could be dead end or whatever. And it, and, it, and it, so I think, um, I think that's kind of where the, the balance in this equation is, is right now, through control access, through controlled access, the landowners are providing access to the, to the pond for public, for the public to access it. Um, and, it and, it's, and it's done in a way to help control the safety, um, and then also control those who are not in alignment with uh, the peaceful uses of the of the pond and the area and the camps that are provided around it. Um, so it seems to be the the, the the situation that we have had for seven years seems to be working as far as the public being able to get to the pond. What's the challenge is is when they get there, how they behave and the uses that they do, which creates the conflict that that we have. So the gates. Um, in, in concert with the Hardwood Electric, with the camp owners, and with the select board over the years, has been let's mitigate, to try to mitigate the issues of the use that's not, um, that, that's outside the bounds of, of like a, a peaceful use of what you'd expect someone to do. So to do that, it's let's, let's put gates up, let's help control the flow, let's restrict the, 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 the time frames on it, which is from 5 a.m. until 8 mm -hmm. And that impacts the road, but it, it essentially impacts where you end up on mm -hmm. that road, um, which is property that is, that is managed by Hardwick Electric and EV High. So, so um, the, the, the time frames in which you do is really using the road or not, when you get there, those are the hours in which we're putting on to help control mm -hmm. that, that use. Um, the, the, um, so the gates have been there for one, to, to be able to um, protect that which are not locked and never have been locked, um, but also importantly is to help prevent, as Taylor mentioned, um, access on the road during muddy seasons, during times that it it's, um, causes damage to the road that the landowners or sort of, the um, camp owners have been maintaining um, and, and improving and having to put money in each year. So, the, and the idea of, the, the, as Taylor mentioned, the, um, the, the uh, gate at the top was really to address that mud access, that, that access during those off seasons, which we for others. You'll find now if you go up, there's, the, the, the gates are open. Um, the gates are open with signage that, that basically access is the well, but That kind of controlled access can also happen on a town road, a class four road. You could, we'd have to go to the select board every time. Well, yeah, you could be a get a, an agreement of, of what the uh, restrictions are going to be, and then if you want to change it in a few years, yeah, you'd have to come back. But it's, I mean, it's laid out in the town, you know, in the state law, 
是。So if the town can grant permission to enclose pent roads and trails by the owner of the land during any part of the year by erecting stiles, unlocked gates and bars in the places designated and to make regulations governing the use of pent roads and trails and to establish penalties not to exceed $50. Well, this must have been written a while ago. <laughs> you know, it, it is, a, it is, possible to still have it be a town road and have controls. And, and I think, you know, we, we've also, you know, talked about trying to provide alternatives to access um, that make it safer and easier um, that also can be controlled. But I think, you know, it, I guess the question too, where, what, what do you do when you get to the end of that town road? Um, is there a place to park? Mm -hmm. No. Is there a place to turn around? No. So I think, you know, how, how when we put it all together and try to look at what, you know, everybody's interest is in on this thing, how, how do we kind of figure out, okay, the intent is for, you know, the harder resident to come down and access the pond, which you've been able to do for your life. And, and no one has been denied access mm -hmm. to that, but in a controlled way. So, in the bigger scheme of things, is this the most effective way to try to do that that allows that access, or does it become a public road, which um, would be controlled, would be maintained, um, monitored uh, by the town, and then it goes to a certain point? The class four road wouldn't necessarily be maintained, but it could It'd still be it Could be some. Okay, so it's not maintained. Well, I mean, last year we spent our whole class four budget on that section of Nichols Pond Road be between the, right, this right. road and the heart of town line. So, but every year we do have mm -hmm. money to do repairs on class we four. We appreciate roads. that work you did on it. Um, so I think the bigger thing is what. Where, where, what's the, what's the best, um, what's the, what's the best outcome? What's the town's interest in? We've got one person from Hardwick petitioning the town of Woodbury or asking about this. Um, is this a, is this a, a Woodbury issue that will become part of a Woodbury concern or is this? Um, no, I think it's a Woodbury issue. I mean, it's, it's a, as far as I'm concerned, it's an asset that's, that uh, has been on the town road maps for probably a hundred years, not more, well, maybe a little less. But uh, that so the town shouldn't get the town giving it up is just giving up an access. I understand, totally understand why you would all love to have a private road. But I think you can get what you want. Still have it be the town yeah, road. I guess the question is: Is the town going to get what they want with a public road? Well, the town does. What, what's, if you did a public road, what would be the, the hope for that public road to get to where? So to get to the water, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it's but you can't get to the water with the public yep. with your public. But the road. community had to, to pull that permission from the land that you is under dispute if they if they insist that it's a public yeah. road. Post oh, um, just what's that? That's all. Yeah. Yeah. There's no dispute. Yeah, there's no dispute of what oh, where, it's it's dispute. where this where this right. goes and those rights that you have on that piece of property that we're posted. But if if that were the case, that we uh, this road where there's some songs that didn't ring out where these roads where where does this road go? Or, um, and I'm sure Norman knows them all by heart. But um, this um, where, where where is the road go at, at the end of the day? If it's a public road, where does the road end? What happens at the end at the current property line? I'm not sure on the ground really where it is. Is it Your just open up just into the last camp? What? Before the last camp. That's yeah. where, before their camp. No. They were it's before, the the green. Green. before the parking area when you when you get to mm -hmm. it, that's where if we're following this philosophy of this right of way, this right of way takes over the Ashley property to a point, which mm -hmm. is to the old Woodbury Granite property. And so you're saying that whoever 
whether it's you or hard rip electric. Right, and Kurt Lohr as well. Mm -hmm. you, have to go, you have to go through the Kurt Lohr piece of property as well. Who's that? Kurt, the Kurt Lohr, they, they have, that was EBI, a guy that got like can he sold it. All the rights oh, okay. for Kurt and Laura. Okay. So, so it's they not actually need to go through their property. We're not, it's not a threat no, right. to be able to say, oh, if you do this, we're going to close it. But if we look at, as a private landowner, what our means are to protect our property, mm -hmm. it would be, if, that's, if that is our, our next right to mm -hmm. post our property, then we could post where the right of way ends. Mm -hmm. And that's our, that would be right now we protect our rights by having limitations on the, the times that people can go. access it. Right. We could still continue to keep those times. We could still continue to be, if it is a public road, you know, we, we, at the end of the day, we're majorly concerned about safety on that road, the use of the road, the conditions of the road, mm -hmm. um, all things that we're trying to take, um, or we have. We have assumed for our responsibility as 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 a, as a private as private landowners to protect this private road while still giving access to the dam. So, if at the end of the day you designate this or it's, it's confirmed or reaffirmed or gone through a process to become a, a public road, you know we we still want to work with you on how it's maintained and how it's gated or not, and what happens when you get to the end of the road. Which people are going to be parked and turning around and something like that. Mm -hmm. as, as our way of being able to control the uses of, that, of, the, of the property at the end of that road. But they'll still be turned around in somebody's parking lot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or parking along the road to get to. Or, and if that's the case, there may not be a way for them to access the pond if, if the landowners are posted. If it's posted, they can't. Not from the end of the road. So, and that's where, where, where what we've, what, what's been working thus far is we've been, the landowners have been maintaining the road, gating the road um, in the winter now, and trying to, trying to work with the road to limit the people or limit the access during certain hours. Mm -hmm. um, we still, even with that, we still have issues with certain people using it in non-safe ways. Shooting guns, fires, um, other things that, that make it uncomfortable for many to even, even be down there. And that, that's an ongoing thing that we, we've been talking with, you know, how to strategize and how to help that. So you think um, if this was a private road, you'd be able to control that? Um, well, as a private road. But you're saying you, you, would still, you don't want to restrict access to the water, but. No, just the misuses. And the gates in the private road gives you that leverage of give and take. It's a give and take sort of thing, you know. Do you, do you guys feel like the gate currently is doing a good enough job of protecting that access and making it safe, or do you feel like it's you know, there's still issues that you'd want to take further steps to solve. It's better, and I think normal correct. It's better than the past years, correct? The dams. Oh, that's not a good I, you know, um, well, there's a couple of things that come up that I met, I guess. One is, um, oh, back in the mid-80s, we started a conservation commission in town. I had a group come to my house and got that going. And we did surveying of the town back then, and there's been several surveys since then. And, you know, key, um, key issue right along, one of the most important things that people in town felt was um, public access to water. And um, here's a case where there is public access to water. And, um, and nothing, nothing that's been mentioned here so far is talking about trying to deny that. But that's a big problem. You know, when you create the access to water, you also create the problems and that's there's been a lot of problems there because that you know it's, it's been known over the years as uh not from many iterations but it's been known as a police free zone kind of thing and with all kinds of things happening down by the dam that shouldn't be any no enforcement except for that one police state police intervention that you mentioned where they uh, lost some of that reputation at that point 
But the uh, but, but because the town is interested in that and um, rightly so, of course, it's an important thing to the town. Um, what should be done about making sure the right thing happens when there is public access? And that's um, that's really what what this whole discussion is about. It isn't about that. Uh, you know, no one's looking to deny access. They're trying to make it work well for families and people that, that use it. And there's a lot of people that use it correctly and we just do a nice job of it. So mm -hmm. how do we go about that? The, um, you know, the, the legalities on all the, these issues get very muddled when you get when you really dig down deep into it, mm -hmm. there's all you can you can fight about this stuff forever if you want to go a legal mm -hmm. route. And the question is what makes the most sense and how can um, how can how can we make things work better? Um, so the um, so what's been going on with the gating is was one method that was put in place to try to try to alleviate some of those problems, but it only went so far because there's still no enforcement. Um, and uh, it's difficult for <laughs> we have some fights we want to know this from time to time. Audrey comes to mind that we're actually going to the dam and lay down some law. Um, but the uh, but it need more than that. It needs some um, you know some more attention paid for that. So um, that, that's a, a difficult question for the town, really. And, and I know you're always grappling with what you do police enforcement in town. But that's uh, an example where, where something needs to happen. People have uh, squatted there and lived there uh, down by the dam. Um, and um, that's bad in and of itself, but also because that tends to dam down use by others because it's difficult to access the dam when people are living there like that. So, so how do we go about making this right? Um, that's really what what I see is, is the issue, and um, and that's what that's what they're trying to do with making that alternative route and by doing the gating and, and so forth. So um, I think it's a question of um, you know, as you were saying, you know, you know, collaborating to figure out how to how to solve some of those problems. That's what I see as the essence of the issue. I was really shocked to find, to hear um, from Norman that somebody's been squatting there for like two summers. And I told that to Mike Sullivan and he went right down and told him to leave. I told him if they're going to come back, but, um, but yeah, I can't believe that. Norman, as a landowner, do you feel like the new gate that's closer to the top of the road, do you feel like it's been helpful so far as a property owner who's you know, yeah, interest. I think it has. I think it's been beneficial. Um, because, but only when when certain camp owners uh, made sure that it was enforced to some degree. Um, because otherwise, people ignored it. Do you mean by closing the gate? Like when, when people would come and close it at a certain time, that was helpful? Yeah, or? that's part of it. You know, it's one of those things where you know, the honest people would respect both laws and, mm -hmm. and other people could care less. <laughs> You get both, both responses like that, you know. But the gates have been left open in the sun, right? Mm -hmm. part, part of the gates, too, is just a, a presence and an awareness mm -hmm. when you go through a gate. Yeah. You're, there's an awareness when there's a sign that says respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's one of the hopes, is that people coming down will see that. And again, it's the, the, the people who enjoy the pond and are respectful use it use it, enjoy it, um, but that's not everybody. And that's kind of where, we're, where the, the, the struggle comes in, is when those who are not, um, um, you know, it, treating the area in which it should be or respecting others who are either there or, or living there, um, it gets dangerous. So, so the, the gates, I think, are, are, are twofold. One, it's really in the winter to, to, to and they weren't locked in the winter, but they were present there, which kept most people from driving down. And if you can prevent them from driving down and provide an alternative access, signage, ice fishing this way where they had, mm -hmm. those who were, were present and wanted to get to the pond still could follow those things. So the intent wasn't to shut it down to not allow mm -hmm. people to the thing. We made an alternative route for them to get there. Mm -hmm. But it's not like, you know, I mean, do you plow it in the winter? It's a trail. It's the old main road now. No, I mean the road that the main camp road now. It's been plowed in the past year. It wasn't plowed last year. It wasn't plowed last year. No. 
Has That's anybody complained about the gate? Like, I know there's been questions about it, but have there been actual complaints? I mean, it doesn't, to me, it seems like a pretty reasonable solution. Um, I don't hear any questions, questions about the gate, but we haven't heard any, we haven't directly heard complaints mm -hmm. um, of, of people not being able to, uh, to, to do what they've usually done. Mm -hmm. We have a contact information the sign. I was just going to put contact information on the signs. I think there is a part of electric the high in the Nichols Pond Association. Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, and, and the communication is one of the most important of hard things to do, but that's, those are the kind of things that the feedback we get is, you know, who you call if you have a question or an answer. Um, and, and that's, you know, those are, besides, Norm's phone number. <laughs> no, but having, but if someone has a question, um, usually if someone takes the time to ask the question, um, whatever their purpose or what their intent was or what they wanted, usually needs we can meet that, that need is met or resolved. And in this case, if a fisherman came to the gate and saw the gate closed, he would see signs that say ice fishing that way mm -hmm. and could follow the path to get down there. Mm -hmm. If you're a mud bogger and you're coming in the, in the spring to look for mud, the, 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 the gate is closed for a purpose yeah. during that season. Yeah. They can still get through, mm -hmm. and they could because it's not blocked, but um, hopefully that's enough deterrence for them not to do mm -hmm. it. Or in this case, if we have closed the dam area from five from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m., you know, do we, is it better to put the sign at the top of the road and say closed or mm -hmm. at the bottom? And that's kind of the the, the, um, uh, the the idea of having the gate at the now at the top with signage, um, but come between eight and or five a.m. and eight a.m. you've got direct access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, one other thing is I, I spoke with the game warden in the area, um, and they're kind of um, on the one hand they're, they're quite happy with the situation in that um, there is public access to the lake for fishing and boating and so on, and they don't have to own an access and manage it and so on. Um, but what he mentioned to me was if there was a, a local ordinance in place about what goes on out of the dam, that he could enforce it. So, um, and he'd be willing to do that. Now, of course, game wardens change, and I'm not sure if that's the correct policy, or there might be a meeting with them to do that. But, um, so there might be an opportunity either for the town to <coughs> do an ordinance that pretty much says what the sign said. What would the ordinance say? No trespassing on private property, or well, no, no access from five from eight p.m. to five a.m. Yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, you just mentioned that you know, of course, set up as a pen row that uh, the select board could make rules and there'll be a fine involved for uh, disobeying them. Yeah. Or if the town has an ordinance on the use of that <coughs> area, it, it could be enforced either by the town or by fish and game, fish and wildlife. You think they'd go out there at 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock at night and break up a party? I don't think that. I think yeah. that might be the game wardens conditions. Game wardens can check licenses. Mm -hmm. You're harming the wildlife by a fire. You set a fire on the private property. Mm -hmm. get you get you for that. <laughs> Still yeah. the other mm -hmm. uh, turn the back corner. They, they're not, they, they don't come up here. <laughs> we've, we've been fighting with this for a while. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've tried to get the, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I mean, some of these are possibilities, you know, to try to, try to deal with it. Um, Did they yeah. talk to the fishing team at one point? Yeah, yeah they, as when this ice fishing came up, yeah. um, Fishing game. We met the fishing game to kind of talk about how how do we how do we help the public access this lake without disturbing or going over private property, mm -hmm. um, and with with private landowners who surround the pond. What what are ways that we could work with them to uh, to help that? And, and they were open. They were open. We we had good discussions. And our alternative, as we was we talked to them about, was create a a, a path that was not on the sort of bordering the camps so they could still get to the um, but they're they're open they're they, they want they want people to fish um, mm -hmm. there are I mean there with that also comes 
the issues of those who don't, you know, aren't good stewards of fishing um, with garbage and whatnot. But that's also the hope of, of having um, more awareness, more communication, and more um, perceived, perceived regulation on access also helps potentially deter those who are not going to behave on that property um, or, or disrupt it. Um, so the, um, and, and further, there's, there's, you know, in a collaborative effort, what's the best way we can, we can try to help the, the most um, interests that are, that are there, which are those uh, public members who want to access Nichols Pond. Um, what, are, what are some creative collaborative ways we can all work together to help make that, make that happen? Which could potentially be other, other access points, other, other roads. Um, mm -hmm. That, that could still get people close to the water so they could access it. Mm -hmm. But with that, regardless, would, would have to be, you know, expectations of use, um, regardless of the private or public, um, those expectations and, and regulations. Um, because you shouldn't, I don't think we want to be here just reacting to those who don't treat the, the property well or the lake wells. It's for those who want to, you know, access it in a way that's respectful. Because if we start making rules just for the the other group, we're we're gonna we're gonna push out those who who um are being respectful. Who are being respectful yeah. and want to use it in a certain way. Yeah, and if we uh, wrote some kind of an ordinance it would have to apply everywhere. And that would be a thank you, Gil. <laughs> well I and Gil for that matter, I'd say, you know, last couple of years, um the um some things have not moved, you know, people, you know, people make problems down there and other people clean up the problems, you know, yeah. so there's a lot of people who really enjoy using the pond mm -hmm. and they, they go there and they, uh, the last, I, I typically go down to the dam or you know, clean up whatever mess there is on the green up there and so mm -hmm. on. And, uh, the last two years, uh, people have already done it. Mm -hmm. I found a bag for all right now, so I found the problem, you know, last so, so, um, it goes both ways. And most people do respect it and do do the right thing, but then there are those that don't, and uh, how, do you, how do you deal with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think you deal with it, or whether or not it's a town road, right. though. It, seems, it, it doesn't seem we're going to solve that just from, you know, the reading of the material that we have um, on the issue and from our lawyers. It seems to me that the only way to really solve whether it's a town road or not is to hire someone. And well, I, I don't know that we want to. What he said was that, that if we decide to go further and litigate this, we should get a surveyor rather than depend on an attorney because mm -hmm. attorneys don't do facts. They rely on fact witnesses, but I don't think we need to do that. He also thought that because um, well, the evidence that I showed him, which was this old thing and the state records and the, um, you know, just the right that the public has for using an access for so many years, that we'd have a good case, but it would be preferable to just work things out rather than litigating yeah so what what i don't quite understand is what do what needs to be worked out like the gate i'm hearing it makes really good sense to me it sounds like it's at least been somewhat helpful it, i'm not hearing that there have been complaints about it so i mean it seems like can we just leave things as they are yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. so if it's if you just do what you're doing and not insist that it's a private road. <laughs> One of the issues you might run into is if you're allowing this on this public road, that means that you're opening up all the rest of your class four roads for that. So if you have nickels all you have, the signs in the trespassing for my hours mm -hmm. my road. So in some ways there's a fairness issue across well, I'm sorry. I what you're saying, yeah. Say that, um, well, I'm saying that if you're applying um, your discretion differently for this road than for another class four mm -hmm. road, um, that could cause a problem down in the future if you don't have that kind of blanket. Well, no, no, I think we could we could do a pet road on any road, any mm -hmm. cut. Like uh, last year, we turned the road into a trail, the one that goes from Buck Lake out to Mac Hill. Yeah, yeah. That was a 
big process, but there was a consideration of doing it as a fent road, but it's just too long. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that you have a lot of class four roads in town. Yeah. And so the question would be, who can put gates on them? Right. And what rules can be made? Right. You know, can just people that live nearby put gates on them? Can anybody put gates on them? Can anybody put Well, it's... Out of town or in town? Well... Kind of kind of thing. One option is, one option that was pointed out was that you could um, do a class four road policy, which we don't have, that could address whether or not, when people can do a, a pent road, but clearly the state law allows for individual roads to be considered. Considered pent gated. I do hear what you're saying as far as, you know, setting a precedent for other roads, and that would be a really big concern for me because I personally am in support of keeping all of our class four roads open for off-road traffic and, you know, whatever. They're great, fun places for people to enjoy, and I think it's one of the benefits of our town. Oh, and the only thing I guess that is a little bit different here is that whether it is a class four road or whether it's a private road mm -hmm. is up for dispute and I don't see us like having an answer for that today at least. Well, we can I mean, either fight saying, it or just agree to something. I mean, something seems like nobody's disputing that there was bad behavior down there. I've seen it myself. And I think actually a little further than some of the stuff you said, I've been down there and seen people have, doing bad behavior, which was then impeding other people trying to get to the water. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a real issue. And so I'm, I'm not against any of the measures that were taken, just the, the private public things. Mm -hmm. the question I have is I think all the signs are, are quite polite, really, because even if they don't apply to the road, all that property on either side is private property. Correct. So as much as you step off the road, you're on private property. So that trespassing, but it doesn't have to say no trespassing on the road, which it doesn't. It doesn't. But, well, I don't know. I don't know what it says when the gate is closed. It doesn't. It says respect. It says respect private, private access. access. Mm. There's nothing on the road that says do not no. drive on this road. The signs basically say respect the private landowners. Um, and so if you're going to access it from the Nichols Road to the to the granite, the old Woodbury granite property, nothing is really stopping you from doing that except for when the gate is closed um, seasonally or sometimes after 8 p.m. and the dam where you're going to is closed. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's, um, and I think, you know, whether it, it goes to a public or a private, and we want to take that to a, a debate or a, a legal course, that that's one course that could be taken. Mm -hmm. But that I think the end of the day is, you know, um, what's what's our goal? What's what, what, what are we not doing now that's, um, causing harm or complaint by uh, someone who, who, whose intent wants to get to the water during those times. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any any issue where anybody has been denied to the water um, at, 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 any, at any time, unless it mm -hmm. was after certain hours or season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's working now whatever you're doing except for the people who don't have respect and I don't think I don't know if gates are going to help that or not. I think they help. I'm just worried. Yeah, I'm sure they help, but <laughs> not going to. Does, that, does the sign say private property? Not on the gate. Sign. No, no, no. No, but the sign that's right next to me. The sign next to the gate is the one that the Red Association, Heart of Electric, and E. High, which um, might be private. It doesn't say private property, it just specifies it as EB Highland. Yeah, respect, um, use. And it basically is respect or lose, you know, access. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And carry in and carry out. That's kind of the message um, that's been like that for years is respect it, utilize it, carry out. Or lose, or lose access. your access. And I guess that's the thing. <laughs> What's, you got to have at some point some leverage to keep, um, you know, this in, in alignment and in tune with the real, the main purpose of, of that, that space. Is there 
would there be any value? I mean, the town could designate that as a kind of home, could allow for those gates to be there, and could allow for the restrictions on use pretty much as, as, as it is now, but the town could do that officially. Um, assuming that it's there, or leaving aside the issue one way or the other, um, and then it would be subject to subject to the fifty dollar fine and so forth, and it would essentially say the same thing, but it would also be the town land or not. Right? Does it make sense to do that? Would that be helpful? Good question. You get to check the care homes and associated. I know most of them. That's probably for yeah. room two. So it sounds like we should have a broader discussion with the camp owners. The only advantage, well, well there are multiple advantages. If we were to have it as a, a public road and have, infor we don't have many enforcement mechanisms. We could do the same things that you're doing now with gates. Also opens us up to being able to use some public funds to maintain the road if that's something that you all want to work with us on with the town with you know in general um, But it does put the onus on us as the town to make sure that um, Our ordinances are enforced um, Gives you some leverage that you don't have as a private landowner, but it does take some things out of your hands um, and I think that that's really where the discussion needs to go, but it has to, I think it sounds like it really has to come from the entire community at Nichols Pond. And you guys have that community. The, uh, yeah, the Camp Owner Association Correct. director was going to be here. Correct. He's, yeah. He's he didn't know. So. But we have an annual meeting every year, so. But you're right, they, 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 the Camp Owners are. I mean, open to it's, it, it's, open to it sounds like you guys are, are and improving the situation overall. So I think the nice thing is that we don't have any disagreements, right. really. Well, we don't want misuse of that land. Yeah, we want you. access to it, but if it's in, private, an then in an appropriate way. And the only thing that will remain access. And I think that Diana's point is what right. the, the town's concern is essentially, you know, how do we make sure that we maintain this for perpetuity? Um, make sure that people do have access to it. And how do we control it? You all have done a wonderful job of making sure that it's better controlled than it was before. Um, didn't solve everything. I don't know if we can do it better. But I think that this is the discussion that we have to have, and it has to be among all of the camp owners. They're all going um, to want a private road. Which is fine. Well, and we had talked talk talk to talk to in 2006 it is fine. about an alternative, the old, the yes, old discontinued, discontinued road. road. They went to the town in 2006 about that, too, with the camp done. Right. But it was going to cost too much money, and the town didn't want to put money in. And that sort of resurfaced recently. This is now new. And that's also an option. That's an option. Mm -hmm. Access um, yeah. to, to, to allow that access to the pond, which goes over private property. Um, but that's, I think that's in the that spirit of what, what can be done, what can be discussed to make, make a um, solution that protects the public. The public good. Public good, but also public access. the rights of the, the private landowners. Because just right. because you want something, you like something or want something in your public and it's private doesn't mean it's 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 it, it's public. No. Um, it's I think there's some great examples of public private partnerships throughout the state that, that um, demonstrate that. Um, because the last thing we want I mean it's not a threat but if we don't want to alienate you all. Well well no it's not just <laughs> us, it's it's who no, you're who's gonna own the property yeah. who, who for the future. The future of this. And if we're not rid of existing mm -hmm. owners, we want to be the owners. But, yeah. um, and that's our concern as, as well. As things change, you, you want to make sure that um, you know you demonstrated the good faith. I, I think that, that for seventy years, that's been demonstrated. Yeah, we don't want to lose that. Right. right. So I like that. Idea of, of, of this is great to have a discussion um, and learn the, the issues that are out there, the concerns that are out there, um, and it's nice to know that no one is here saying, "Oh, I can't get to the pond." 
Um, that I, I'm blocked from going to the pond, which I've done for years. Um, but also, what are, what are some ways that we can collaborate, discuss that brings the interest of safety? And it's a lot of it's just safety. And when we say safety driving on the road, it's like so they're not so they're not driving too fast or impaired. Um, you know, as they meander through the woods to, by people's camps when a lot of people are walking down there and whatnot. So uh, I think everyone's on the same kind of. I think we all agree interest. in the uh, so general who, interest. Who owns so Carter Collector owned the dam? Carter Collector the dam. Own the dam. The concrete and the water rights on the dam. Okay, but they don't own that nice little lawn right behind it, or do they? Well, the, the, if it's part of the infrastructure of, of hydro, then they would. Um, they mow it. They would, they would well, I just wonder if they um, could, if they consider that a town and harbor property, if they would once in a while be able to send one of their policemen up there. I mean, we can't get the That was discussed again back in 2006. What? Well. It has been discussed throughout. Yeah. Yeah. And Nothing there. They wouldn't. No. Well, they don't. Are there police that down there enough for the right reasons? Yes, I was going to say. Wait a second. So, 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 so. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to say I missed that. The harder police, that they, they didn't recover because it's in a different county to the town. Mm -hmm. We can't get our, anybody to go way the heck up there just because it's yeah. way up there. <laughs> But they've been called a number of times in the last year they didn't show up. Mm -hmm. The state police, but they, it's in their records. The state they were police? Yeah. Yeah. Really? But they didn't show up. Oh, they didn't? No, they don't. Oh. Hmm. I don't make it up here very often. But well, we can discuss with the association because we do have a meeting every year every summer. I'm curious for that. I think it'd be great if you all would have sort of follow through on this discussion with your group and see how we can help. We're not going to solve this. Not right now. Um, there it is. My way. This is the way. I think it would be easy to solve it just by saying that the public road it always has been and it provides access to the water which is a really spectacular natural resource and it's unfortunate that there's only this one little piece where people can get at it but that's the way it is and um, it could, if, uh, we could allow all kinds of management tools and gates and things like that like you're doing now we could do it under a pen road, pen road rule that's my opinion but. so just to be clear in 1998 when the select board made a private road is that void is that not, out the window? i don't see any evidence of it well, they put the sign what the town put the sign the PBT yeah the sign yeah but that's <laughs> this is a whole process for they would have to discontinue the road in order to he has said it was a private room, and that would have been a very formal process. Um, and there would be plenty of paperwork about that if it happened. Would the same paperwork be there for building the road, for designating that? Well, it's like the 1915 paperwork yeah. that, um, that our town clerk found. Um, that was a formal process, and it's the same. 100 plus years later, it's the same process. Yeah, the petition and the site visit and the laying out the road, laying out the road and all that, it's the same. So if you wanted to, if people want to like upgrade from a class four to a class three, there's a there's a process for that. Downgrade from a class three to a class four, there's a process for that. And it's pretty much the same yeah. process. Mm -hmm. No. It sounds like the written evidence is that it's a it's town. I mean, it's been, it's been on the state maps for us. I've seen or heard anybody say it. Yeah, they, but they could easily just pick a road. Hmm? They could just pick that road. Oh, that's a public road. I, I don't know how. 
how the state goes about putting things under maps. Yeah. Sometimes. Usually, usually it's for aerial maps that they look at. Well, today, but not in 19, you know, 69. <laughs> they, they, were sur they were surveyed roads. It's, it's, yeah. They were surveyed roads. That's yeah. the basis of it. And towns do have to communicate. Like, we, we downgraded a road um, to a trail, and I had to, when I was on the subway, I had to inform uh, e trans about that downgrade, because they keep a record of how many miles of class four, mm -hmm. class three, and class two roads that each town has. Um, so there is communication between the town and the state on what's designated on the state mm -hmm. maps. And I, I agree the state maps are not completely correct from the old 1915 um, map that's there. They have um, the driveway down to the old rights camp as a town road too, and that's just it's inc That's incorrect. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sorry I had another meeting, but I didn't do that, but I had to do that this one too. Um, and Michael, the gates, you mean you heard anything about reaction to the gates on top of the road? No, I haven't heard anything at all. And as far as the summer goes, it seemed to be open all the time. Um, I mean, the, the issue for me personally, I know you probably all talk about this and are ready to go home, but um, is the, uh, what happens on the dam. I mean, we have a town road that ends on private property. Right? And I know that the who owns the property has been a long day also. Um, but at 2 o'clock in the morning, when people are roaring and downloading their trucks or booming their truck radio, it affects everybody on the pond. And there seems to be no way to, um, for that landowner to enforce um, the behavior that happens on their property. Um, and, you know, uh, that's the thing that bugs me. I, I am pretty much convinced that it's a town rule, just from Everything that's in there um, in that 1915, the select board minutes, the, the map, the discontinuing of the old road that, um, that used to be the road down um, to the, actually I think that road used to go to the community that lived below the dam, but there wasn't a dam there. The farm, I believe. Yeah, there was something, yeah, there was something out there. There was a farm. Um, my issue is trying to change the behavior on the dam for the people, the property owners that around the pond that have to put up with that kind of um, behavior. And you know, I live all over, my camp is way across the road. I don't have to deal with the trucks coming up and down, but I do have to listen to it all. Um, and, and I'm, if I were right on the road or put the camp right next to the dam, um, you know, that would be unacceptable to me. And it, it wouldn't happen at the park at Nashville Pond. Uh, it wouldn't happen at any of our fishing accesses. Um, that stuff was going on. Somebody would do something about it. But nobody seems to be able to do anything about what happens. So I don't know. You, you think it's been a private road since 1978. 1998, did you say? Anyway, um, but things haven't changed as far as partying. I don't know if public or private would, would change that. <laughs> well, it's a negotiating tool when you're down and talking. We got to be able to close the road. Yeah, the, the alternative would be to close the property, which is next to it. Right. I mean, that's, if, if, there, if we have, we don't have access for the opportunity to close the, the actual road, our next step is to close the property, which prevents people from accessing. You mean permanently? Well, for so that time we need to close it to 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 um, correct the problem. Because if you if you if you don't have the leverage to close something, then then the misuse of the public will never. Change. You could have the leverage to close it through a pent row. Well, we have we have the leverage to close the property, the post the property. Right. So Just and, and we haven't done that, but that would be our leverage. To what do you mean to close at, at the property line? You mean down there? This, if we if we go with this map and this philosophy, this right of way gets you on the old Ashton mm -hmm. property to a point, which is mm -hmm. the old granite, granite um, point, property, yeah. mm -hmm. which is actually Kurt Moore's property. Um, that could be gate. Mm -hmm. Which then there's no public. Then you'd have to go over private land to get to the. 
which is not the intent, but that's if you want to, if you have to have as a part of landowner leverage to be able to stop something from happening, you need the, the ability to post the property. Yeah, well, you stopped. still could, I guess you still could do that if it was public road up yeah, till right. the end of the property line, and if you want to uh, get keep the public away from the water, I guess you could do it at that it's point. Not, it's not keeping them away from the water. It's the safety it's issue. It's a safety issue. And, and the, the, the disturbance and the destruction of private property mm -hmm. that, that is really the root of this. And ongoing. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's uh, I know it's a problem. It has been. For and there's nothing anybody seems willing to do about it. Nothing that the, you know, the property owners are able to do anything about it. I mean, people have, the Kurt Laura, who um, you just mentioned, have gone and asked people to leave. There's, it is, a, there are posted mm -hmm. times there. Mm -hmm. um, and they just tell her that, you know what, mm -hmm. and uh, or threaten them, um, and they just stop doing mm -hmm. that. Um, or if you're trying to deal with people that are outrageously drunk, um, you know, it's kind of intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, so, but public or private, no, what's the difference? Everybody just has to sit there and uh, suffer through it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's your land, you could bring a sign on your land. Right at the beginning, it's going to be a So, within the end of the town. Right. Create mm -hmm. And, you know, as a private landowner, you know, the recourse is to call the state police and uh, they don't come. Mm -hmm. If Harvard Electric somehow is involved, um, you know, maybe the Harvard police will come. Hasn't been successful yet. No. What? And they've almost told people in Woodbury, well, you know, that is in Woodbury, it's not in Harvard. Mm -hmm. Is there any private security around that you can Oh, call? goodness gracious. Sure. A vigilante group Okay, all right. Public record. <laughs> um, well, it is now uh, quarter after seven. This meeting was going to adjourn at seven p.m. I would take any final thoughts that we can put into record. I don't think that we're going to solve this at this moment. But what would be great? When is the next meeting of your? Yeah, it's not determined yet. Not if it's possible for you all to have that meeting and rope us in, I think yeah. we would like to be involved. Yeah, that'd be, that's a good idea. Um, and then we can continue this discussion. I don't think that we're solving it at this moment, but we have a lot of good information as to how we need to move forward. Yeah, I mean, you could take the uh, an, um, plan of formally trying to get the town to throw up the road. But yeah, that's a kind of a problem. <laughs> we we'll have some problems there, but I mean, it's a process. And the public has a right to intervene in that. But if you're not willing to admit that it's a town road now, <laughs> Thank you all. Any any final comments from anyone? Thank you all for being here. We appreciate the time. Really, really do. All right. So at uh, seven seventeen, I'd like to adjourn the special meeting of the Woodbury Select Board in association with Nichols Pond Dam Road Access. Thank you for being here.